Hello students, welcome to the class of teacher Meenal Pereira. In today's class, we will be studying about flower and fruits. Okay, so let's begin. You all love the beautiful flowers that the plant has. So, let's first study about the structure of the flower. Observe carefully a fully open hibiscus flower. Now, hibiscus or shoe flower children, you can see in your surrounding. So, if you possible, please pluck one flower and see the following parts carefully. Flower may have a long or a short stalk called pedicel. Okay, so this green color one children, you can see this is a stalk that is called pedicel. One end of pedicel is attached to the stem. So, this is the stem of the plant and one end of pedicel is attached to the stem. Then, the other end of pedicel is expanded. Expanded means wide and swollen and it is called as receptacle. Okay, so this, this is one end that is attached to the stem. This is other end which is expanded and swollen which is called as receptacle. Petals and other parts of the flower are supported on the receptacle. Okay, so here you can see the beautiful petals and other parts of the flower. So these parts are supported on the receptacle. Then let's study about the parts of the flower. So which are the different parts of the flower? We have calyx. This is the calyx. Then corolla. This pink color one is the corolla. We have androsium. Androsium is the male reproductive part of the flower. So we will be studying about androsium which is present here this part which tells you anther and filament. This is androsium and gynosium which is present here. So these are the important parts of the flower and each part we will be studying in details now. Now moving further first to calyx and corolla. Let's see what is calyx. Calyx in the bud condition the petals are covered by leaf like part called sepals. Now look here. This is the flower which is in bud condition. Okay. Bud means before flowering or you can, the flower is in the condition that we called as bud. So you can see that this in this bud condition this flower is covered by green leaf like part. So these parts are called as sepals. And as you can see, they are green in color and they form the calyx. So this is when the flower is in the bud condition and once the flower blooms or once the petal comes out, then see here, it occupies the place at the base of the flower. So this is called as calyx. And then corolla. Corolla is made up of colorful parts. These are called petals. Okay, so these are pink color ones that you can see here. The most attractive part of the flower is petals or corolla. So if you, this is the petal of a rose flower. You all are very well aware to that. Okay, the corollas are having different color, different size and of course beautiful smell. Observe the shape, color and smell of some of the corolla of the plants. That is of a rose. See the color. Then we have the chrysanthemum which is yellow in color. Then hibiscus or shoe flower which is red, white, yellow depending upon what variety you have. Then jasmine or mogra which is white and this is having beautiful smell. Then we have the kaneer plant. Okay, kaneer plant which is having attractive colors and we have the tugger which is again white in color. Okay, so children you look at this six different flowers. Everywhere you will see that the shape, the color and the smell of the corolla or petal is different. Then moving further to androsium and gynosium. Now let's study in details about androsium and gynosium. 
Now first we will study about gyno androsium sorry. Now this is the flower and here you can see this part. This part is called as androsium. Now let's see what it has. Androsium is the male reproductive part of the flower. Okay. Now every almost all the living individuals they have two reproductive part that is the male reproductive part and female reproductive part okay so in case of flower also androsium is called as male reproductive part of the flower now what are the parts of androsium it consists of stamen okay so this full part this is called as stamen and each stamen is made up of anther. See here on the top, these yellow color ones, these are called anther and filament. This is a stalk or a tube like structure. So it has anther which is having yellow color pollen grains and a filament which is a stalk. Okay, so male reproductive part which is also called as stamen and the stamen is made up of anther and filament. Moving to gynosium. Gynosium is the female reproductive part of the flower. It is made up of carpels. So this entire part, this gynosium, which is shown here in the diagram, and this is how it looks actually. It is made up of carpels. And what a carpel consists of? It consists of a stigma, then a style, a ovary. So these are the various parts of gynosium. Okay, so in case of hibiscus flower, the androsium and gynosium are in the same flower. Okay. Now, you know human beings, in human beings, male reproductive part, male is having. Female reproductive part, female is having. But in case of hibiscus flower, same flower is having the androsium as well as gynosium. There are some flowers in which the androsium and gynosium is on different or separate flower but in case of hibiscus it is on the same flower okay so androsium male reproductive part and gynosium which is female reproductive part okay are you clear about androsium and gynosium please remember the names then if we take a vertical section of hibiscus flower vertical means upside down so what is done here Take a vertical section of hibiscus flower with the help of a sharp blade by cutting the flower vertically from stigma to pedicel. Okay, so this entire we have taken a vertical section and then you can see that both the section of the flower will have the same structure. Means if we divide it into two parts, it is having the same part as you can see. It will have petals, it will have style sepal, ovary, then the receptor and the stem. Okay, so if you actually cut the flower and see, later on after observing flower, you can cut the flower and see, you can see a very similar structure like this. Then, after maturity, the anther burst and the pollen grains which are released fall on the stigma. Okay, now see here. Here I have the anther. I showed you in the previous picture. Now this anther on the top has pollen green. So after maturity it burst. Burst means open. And the pollen grains are released which are very small. Very minute. Chintu pintu. Okay. So they are released. They are going and falling on the stigma. Okay. Now it may fall on the. Here this is the stigma. This is the gynosium part. This is the stigma. It may fall on the same flower or it may fall on the another flower of the same plant or same type. And this process is called pollination. Okay, so what is pollination? The pollen grains after maturity release and falls on the stigma. That is from androsium. The pollen grains are released and it is going to fall on gynosium that is on stigma. So this process is called pollination. And children you can see a pollinator here. What is this pollinator? 
what is the use we see insects are fetching around the flowers so what is the use of the insect now sometimes it is not possible for the pollen grains to fall on a very far flower so what insects are doing is insects help in the long distance pollination of flowering plant insects when sit on the flower pollen stick to them and when they sit on another flower these pollen fall off to combine with the ovule okay so now here we have pollens that are there now insect when they sit on the flower this insects stick legs are very sticky okay so this pollen grains are attached to the legs of the insect and then they go and fall or when the insect sits on the stigma okay stigma is also sticky so some of the pollen grains are falling on the stigma and thus they form the ovule so insect help in the reproduction that is formation of new plant due to pollination ovules or egg cell in the ovary get fertilized okay so this is the internal structure of the ovary it has egg cell it get fertilized and then fertilized ovule forms a seed this is the seed and the ovary develops into fruit so after fertilization the egg cell or this is the ovary structure so the fertilized ovule it forms the seed and the ovary develops into fruit okay so right now this much is there for your syllabus so you study only this much it is not so simple process children but about that in detail you will study in higher standard so right now you just remember pollination that is carried by insects and then after pollination the fruit gets formed from the ovary and the ovules are developed into seeds okay so this is the structure of the flower okay calyx corolla and rosium and gynosium are the important parts of the flower now moving to the most important part mm we all like it very much that is fruits we eat many different types of fruit each fruit has its own characteristic there are variation in their shape color taste etc you all know very well see here variety of fruits you can see all are different in shape structure and of course as well as taste there are some fruits like mango which contain only one seed okay whereas we have jackfruit or papaya or kiwi you can say these are the fruit that consist of many small uh, or many small seeds okay and jackfruit you know jackfruit small small fruitlets are there and it has its own seed then if we observe the fruits like mango chiku banana grapes orange what do we observe each fruit has a different skin or shell fleshy part and seed okay so variety of food and every all fruits are different in case of fruits like cashew the seed is outside the fruit you can see here these are cashew and the seed is outside for all these plant the seed is inside okay now if we soak the seeds or some of the plant in water and if we press the seeds with your finger and if we observe them now we have to see which seed gets divided into two equal parts okay so now there are some seeds which get divided into two equal parts these are called as dicotyledonous seeds di means two so one seed can get divided into two equal parts okay you can try taking a pea seed pea seed you can very clear, easily divide into two parts whereas seeds which do not divide into two equal parts are called as monocotyledonous seed nowadays you get corn or maka you try to make the corn seed into two equal part you cannot make that okay so some seed you can divide into two parts that is called as dicotyledonous seed and some seed that you cannot divide into two part that is called as monocotyledonous seed 
Okay, children. So I hope you are clear with the lesson. We are through with the lesson. This is your teacher, Minal Parera, signing off.